Hello friends and welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to be talking about 25 accessories that you need for your GoPro. Now most of these accessories were made for the Hero 9 in particular, but you can use them with any GoPro out there. I'll also have a link in the description below to kit.co and that link will have all of the products that I mentioned. I'm also going to break this video down into four different sections. So we're going to start with basic accessories for your GoPro, followed by accessories for vlogging, then accessories for shooting cinematic video, and finally accessories for action or water sports. If you want to skip ahead to any of those sections, there are timestamps in the description below. One last thing, this video is not sponsored. We received a few items for free, but we bought most of these accessories with our own money. One of the first things you should get for your brand new GoPro are screen protectors. These are tempered glass screen protectors by Telesyn, and they come with screen protectors for your front lens, also the front screen of the GoPro Hero 9, and the back LCD screen. So on the GoPro Hero 9, you can finally remove the front lens filter, which you couldn't do on the Hero 8. So this means if you ever damage this filter, like scratch it or break it, then we just keep a spare filter with us so that we can swap that out. And I think that's a lot better than adding yet another piece of tempered glass in between the GoPro lens and possibly degrading our video quality. So in addition to a spare filter, we also carry this zippered case. And it just goes over your GoPro and it gives you some protection on your front and back LCDs as well as your lens. So just a little bit of peace of mind. The next thing you'll need for your GoPro is a memory card. So the GoPros still take micro SD cards. They're rather cheap these days. So I recommend getting a minimum 64 gigabyte card. We tend to use 128 gig or 256 gig cards. And that is perfectly fine for all of the 4K video shooting that we do with the GoPro. Next, spare batteries and battery chargers. So this is the official GoPro Hero 9 battery. It is different from all of the GoPro batteries because the Hero 9 is, I think, the biggest GoPro that they've made. And so this battery is a little bit bigger than even the Hero 8's battery, so it is very specific to your GoPro model. This is the official GoPro Hero 9 battery charger, so you can charge up to two GoPro batteries at a time. So on the topic of official GoPro accessories, if you have a GoPro Plus subscription, you can actually go to their website and you can get up to 50% off of accessories, which is a really great deal. I got a discounted battery charger and spare battery by doing exactly that. So it definitely works out in your favor. If the official GoPro battery charger is a little too expensive for you, there are other alternatives by third-party battery makers, such as Telesyn. This is an alternative Telesyn charger and it looks pretty similar to the official GoPro version, but you can charge up to three GoPro batteries with the Telesyn version. As for third-party batteries, we used to use them with the GoPro Hero 7, but some of you commented and told us that some of the freezing bugs that we experienced could be because we were using third-party batteries. So ever since then, we've switched over to only using official GoPro batteries. So if you can, we really recommend using the official GoPro batteries. If you're wondering how many spare batteries you need, it really depends on your shooting style and how good you are at keeping those spare batteries charged in between your shooting sessions. We only have one spare battery, and we find that that's more than enough for a full day of shooting. But this extra accessory also helps us get by for really long days of shooting. This is a grip slash external battery by Ulanzi, and it's just really handy for giving you some extra juice when you're not shooting. You unfortunately cannot charge while you're recording, but when you're between recording, if you connect your GoPro to this external battery, then it helps keep you charged. The next accessory is an alternate side door for your GoPro. So the side door of your GoPro can actually come off and that's for attaching the media mod or for attaching an alternative door such as this one by Ulanzi. So after we attach the side door, it gives you some nice protection of your battery and your memory card, but it leaves a little hole so that you can access the USB-C port. This is really handy for charging or connecting your GoPro to your computer. And in addition to that, you also get a quarter inch thread and a cold shoe mount for attaching accessories. If you do use this door, just be aware that your GoPro is no longer waterproof. But other than that, it's really handy if you want to attach little accessories. Next, let's talk about grips or handles. So you can film with your GoPro just like this, but you won't get the best stability. So if you want really good stability plus some flexibility when you're filming, then you want to use a grip, such as this Insta360 pole. 
So this is the main grip that we're using with our GoPro these days. And it's just so great because it can extend really, really easily. So if you ever want to get a high range or just get your GoPro out to get maybe two people in the frame, then this grip has just been fantastic. Two other alternative grips that we use are the Joby Gorilla Pod because of the bendy arms that let you attach the GoPro to just about any surface. And finally, this is the GoPro 3-way that we like, again, for the flexibility of going from a handheld grip to becoming an extended grip whenever we need a little bit of height or to angle the GoPro to be in a different position. The next accessory is related to grips, but that is a quick release. So this is a magnetic quick release, it has a GoPro mount on top, and on the bottom is a quarter inch tripod thread. So how you would use it is you can attach it to one of your grips, such as this Insta360 pole, and when I have the other piece attached to the GoPro, I can very easily attach it to the grip just like that. And it's a rock solid hold. It's a lot faster and more flexible than having to unscrew this every single time you wanna take your GoPro off of a mount. We have several of these magnetic mounts and I basically put them on every grip that we use so that if I wanna go from the Insta360 pole to the Gorilla Pod, all I have to do is remove the GoPro and attach it to the other grip that I wanna use. And so I can go between my mounts within seconds. So this quick release has been super handy and I wish that I'd been using them sooner, honestly. Another quick release that we use is called the Claw and it's kind of similar to the magnetic quick release, but the main difference is that it doesn't have the GoPro attachment. Instead, it has a standard quarter inch tripod thread. So how we use this is that I put one piece on the bottom of a grip such as the Insta360 stick, but it has a quarter inch thread on the bottom. And then I put the other piece piece on something like a tripod plate, or in this case, this is a black rapid strap for holding your camera on your shoulder. And so I put one piece on the bottom so that if I ever want to have the camera strap around me and I want to have the GoPro hang in there, or maybe I just want to take it off, then I can use the quick release that way. And since we're talking about ways of transporting or mounting your GoPro, here's another accessory that I don't know how I lived without this, but this is called the Spider Monkey Grip, I think it's called. And it's a really simple concept, but it allows you to hold your GoPro when it's attached to a grip. There are a lot of different options out there that let you hold or easily transport your GoPro, but usually not with a grip. This has been super handy for all those times when you want to go from vlogging to having your hands-free and still having a grip. So for hiking, for travel, super low cost and low profile. Definitely recommend this. So now let's talk about vlogging accessories. So Martin and I have been vlogging with the GoPro ever since the GoPro Hero 7. And we do a lot of adventure travel vlogs that go on our second channel, Gemini Discover. So if you'd like to see any vlogs shot with GoPro, please check out that channel. But these are some of the accessories that we use to vlog with GoPro. The first very important piece is the GoPro Media Mod. So the Media Mod right now is only available for the Hero 8 and the Hero 9. It is model specific, so you have to get the Media Mod that's going to fit your GoPro. But the great thing about the Media Mod is that it has built-in microphones, and in the back it also gives you a USB-C port and a micro HDMI port and a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. That part is really important because GoPro hasn't had a microphone jack in the cameras since I think the Hero 2. So if you want to add an external microphone to your camera, which for GoPro you almost definitely do, then you have to find a way to add that 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. So the media mod is one option, but there is another option and that is the official GoPro mic adapter. You have to get this mic adapter from GoPro. Any other mic adapters aren't going to work. There's something about the way they engineered this mic adapter that makes it work only with GoPro. And it actually works really, really well, despite the fact that it's about as big as the GoPro itself. 
Now when you see this video, hopefully the GoPro firmware update is out that lets you use the Hero 9 with the GoPro mic adapter. Because right out of the box, you cannot use these two together. There's a firmware update coming out in November 2020, hopefully very soon, that allows the compatibility. But regardless, you might notice that when you plug in this media mod, it just hangs out and really gets in the way. So you have to get a little creative about where you're going to put this media mod as you're using it, and that is where GoPro cages come in really handy. So these are two GoPro Hero 9 cage alternatives that give you space for the GoPro and also for the GoPro mic adapter. These are very model specific, so you have to buy the cage that's gonna fit the GoPro that you're using. One is metal and one is plastic. The metal obviously is a lot stronger, so it helps if you accidentally drop your GoPro, but it is also a lot heavier and more expensive. I actually prefer the plastic version. We used a plastic GoPro vlog cage for the GoPro Hero 7, and throughout the entire year that we used it, despite dropping it multiple times, that plastic really held up. So I prefer plastic, it's a lot more lightweight and still very strong and gives you all of the features that you're gonna need for vlogging with a GoPro. And the nice thing about these Ulanzi cages is that not only is there space for the mic adapter, but they also give you some cold shoe mounts for mounting accessories and there's a 52 millimeter thread for adding filters such as a polarizer or ND filter. So if you plan to vlog with the GoPro and you're gonna use the GoPro mic adapter, then you're definitely gonna need one of these cages. But if you go for the GoPro media mod instead, then you don't need the cage. The media mod essentially replaces these cages. Another accessory that you'll probably need when you're vlogging with a GoPro is an external microphone. Now the GoPro itself actually has pretty good internal microphones. They've really been improving it model after model, and on the Hero 9, I think it's the best ever. And that also goes for the GoPro Media Mod. So the GoPro Hero 9 Media Mod, again, has built-in microphones, and these mics are actually really good. Like, they improve the sound quality in the Media Mod better than I expected. And I actually did another video comparing the GoPro Media Mod microphones to the GoPro internal microphones and six other external microphones. So I'll leave a link in the description below. However, there were a couple of extra microphones that did not make it into that test video because we didn't have them yet. And one is the DDD4 Duo. So this kind of funky looking microphone is kind of like the Rode Video Micro. It's almost the exact size. But the nice thing about this mic is that it records sound from the front and also the back. So really handy because most other shotgun or directional microphones don't let you do that. So I have another video that does a full review of this DDD for Duo, and it's overall a really positive review, but there was one little problem in that video that I mentioned, which was this side cord banging on the camera and causing some extra noise. Didi actually reached out to me on Twitter and told me that the best way to solve that problem was to tuck this cord into one of the grooves on the bottom of the microphone. So as long as you do this, this is a really stellar microphone and I definitely recommend using it with GoPro, especially if you're a two-person vlogging team. Another microphone system that is reviewed in that same video as the DDD4 Duo is the Saramonic Blink 500. So this is a wireless microphone system and it's very similar to the Rode Wireless Go. Up until now, the Rode Wireless Go was the main microphone that we recommended to all vloggers. And we still recommend it because it's just fantastic for having that wireless microphone system. The only problem with the Rode Wireless Go is that it doesn't allow you to connect two microphones. And that is where the Ceremonic Blink comes in. So again, if you're a two-person vlogging team, then the Ceremonic Blink 500 is the way to go. So the final vlogging accessory that I recommend is an external light. And the main reason why you need an external light is if you ever want to shoot after dark with a GoPro. Because if you've ever tried to do that, then you know that GoPro sucks at low light shooting. That hasn't changed with the Hero 9. The only way that you can vlog or film in the dark with a GoPro is with an external light. There are quite a few external light options out there, so I'm going to talk about three in particular. All of these lights have rechargeable batteries, and they're waterproof and weatherproof, and very, very strong. So the first light I have here is the official GoPro light mod, and 
this, you know, honestly, it's okay, but I think it's really expensive for what it is. I think you could pay for another light around the same price and get a lot more bang for the buck. So let's talk about those lights instead. The first light is my absolute favorite one of the bunch, and that is the Joby Bemo light. And the main reason why I like this light over the others is that it includes cold shoe mounts on the side of the light, which I think is so clever because that gives you a lot more mounting options, and you can also attach other accessories to the light itself. This light is also made by the same Joby that makes the Gorillapod tripods, so this is a really strong release from Joby. Another light that I recommend is the Lytra Torch 2.0. I did a separate video reviewing this light, link in the description if you want to check it out, but it's pretty similar to that Joby Bemo light, but the big advantage that it has is that you can add filters on top of this light in case you ever want to change the colors. And you can't do that with the Joby Bemo light, so if you want some flexibility adding colored lights, then the Lytra Torch 2.0 is the way to go. And the third and final light that I have here is the Lytra Pro. I like this light a lot because of its size. Even though it is a lot bigger than the Joby Bemo and the Lytra Torch, because it's bigger, the light quality is actually better because it's able to give you more soft and filtered light. It's also a little bit stronger. So if you want the absolute best light quality that you can use with a GoPro and even other cameras like your mirrorless camera or DSLR, then this Lytra Pro is really, really impressive. For this next section, I'm gonna talk about three accessories that help you film cinematic video with your GoPro. By cinematic video, we're talking about film or Hollywood movie-like quality, which I know is very subjective, but there are a few things that the GoPro isn't really good at doing by itself, so these accessories help you achieve that cinematic footage. First is a GoPro gimbal. Now, GoPro has really, really good built-in stability. Hypersmooth was in introduced in the GoPro Hero 7, and in the Hero 9, I think it's better than ever. So you arguably don't need a gimbal to get ultra-smooth footage, but you might need a gimbal if you're planning to move in such a way that you can't mimic as a human. So if you're trying to get you know, super slow and steady footage, it's just realistically hard to do with your arms and your hands. But if you have a gimbal, that helps you really smooth out your footage even further. A gimbal also helps you do more sophisticated camera moves such as follow focus or inception mode or motion time lapses. Those are all things that you can't do without a gimbal. So this GoPro gimbal that I have here is the Hohem iSteady Pro 3. I did a full review, link in the description if you want to hear more details about this gimbal. But another gimbal that I didn't mention in that video that also will work really well with a GoPro is the Zhiyun Crane M2. So that gimbal does cost a little bit more than this one, but it is a little bit bigger, so it's more stable, and it can also accommodate different types of cameras besides GoPro. So in addition to ultra smooth and buttery footage, cinematic videos also have a small degree of motion blur. And that comes from the ability to keep your camera shutter speed at double that of your frame rate. Now for most cameras, the GoPro included, if you do that, then your full image is probably going to be blown out. So to to balance the light in your footage, you need ND filters. So these are filters by Polar Pro, and these are ND filters by Telesyn. They work a little bit differently. The Polar Pros actually replace the front filter of your GoPro, whereas these Telesyn filters just go on top of your existing GoPro filter. So these are a little bit faster to change out when you're in the field. These two filters also come in at very different price points. So if you want a full breakdown of these two ND filters and a further explanation about why you need ND filters to begin with, then check out the video Link in the description below. If you can't already tell, I do a lot of extra GoPro videos, so this accessory video is a really good chance for me to tell you about all the different GoPro videos that I've done so far. All right, and the final cinematic accessory that you might need for your GoPro is the official GoPro display mod. Now this came out right before the GoPro Hero 9 did, and it seemed conflicting to a lot of people because the GoPro Hero 9 came with that front-facing screen. And this display mod ultimately was supposed to give you that front-facing screen on cameras that didn't have it. But you still might need a display mod like this if you want to film cinematic footage with your GoPro. 
And the main advantage that this display mod gives you is that it can bend so that you can film in different positions and still be able to see your screen. If you only use the existing GoPro screen, then you have to be down eye level with it to see what you're filming or connect to the GoPro app. And neither of those is really convenient. But if you have a display mod like this, this just goes on top of the GoPro cold shoe. And then you can flip this display mod so that you can you know, be filming down low and still be able to see what you're filming. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks for sticking around. This is the final section where I talk about GoPro accessories for shooting action or water sports. We're gonna start with a few extra mounts. So the first mount is the GoPro backpack clip. This is one of the first mounts that I ever used with GoPro uh, because I wear a lot of backpacks, honestly. But it kind of looks a lot like a chip clip and it functions a lot in the same way. But you can clip this to your backpack, either the side strap or that front chest strap, and it helps you get a POV perspective while you're on the move and have your hands free. I've always preferred this clip to the GoPro bra, although arguably if you're doing like some hardcore action where you're moving a lot, then you might want to use that GoPro chest strap instead. But if you wear a lot of backpacks like I do, then this backpack clip is super handy and super strong. So the next mount is the GoPro Jaws clamp along with the flexible gooseneck mount. So I mainly use these jaws whenever I'm trying to get the GoPro into a really awkward space where a tripod won't fit. So think of like a window ledge or the side of a table, or if you're doing action, your handlebar on a bicycle or a motorcycle. So the final mount that I recommend is the Joby suction cup. And I like that suction cup because it's just super handy for filming inside or outside of a car. So we use a suction cup on the outside of our car whenever we're trying to get driving videos. But we also attach it to the inside of the car whenever we're trying to vlog while we're in the car. These suction cups might look pretty flimsy, but they're incredibly strong. And we've driven up to 70 miles per hour with our GoPro attached to the outside of our car with the suction cup, and it never has a problem. The next accessory that I recommend is this cable tether. This came in super handy when I went whitewater rafting last year. So I turned to this cable for extra security because one side has a loop that's just big enough to fit around the GoPro screw, and then the other side has this carabiner that you can attach to your belt, your backpack, or in my case, a life vest. And it just gives you a little bit of extra security in case your GoPro falls off. And it did come in very handy when I jumped off of a cliff with my GoPro attached to me because the GoPro did go flying off of my life vest, but luckily it didn't get lost thanks to this tether. Speaking of security, you might wanna invest in a cage for the GoPro to protect it, especially if you do a lot of sports where your GoPro might fall off and get damaged. For most modern GoPros, you no longer need a cage. The GoPro Hero 7 and on is waterproof, and the GoPro Hero 8 and on have attachments built in so that you no longer need the cage to attach the GoPro to a mount. However, I really like this metal cage by Telesyn because even though it's metal, it's actually still lightweight. Also gives you some cold shoes for mounting accessories, but more importantly, it just gives you a little bit of extra security, especially along those edges, which is where your GoPro tends to fall. Something else that you might need for your GoPro is a waterproof housing or a diving cage. So the GoPro Hero 7, 8, and 9 are all waterproof without a cage, but you might still need a cage if you intend to deep dive your GoPro. So using a cage like this will waterproof your GoPro to up to 60 meters underwater, which is pretty impressive. And the very last accessory I'm going to talk about is the GoPro Dome port. So this is also a waterproof housing of sorts, but the main reason why you would use something like this is if you want to get an image like this. So you've probably seen these like half underwater and half above water images. They're actually really hard to get unless you use a dome like this. So I've always wanted to capture a image like this, but unfortunately I don't live in a place that allows me to swim this time of year. So I haven't had a chance to test this out, but all the reviews online are pretty stellar. So if you ever find yourself in a sunny tropical destination or in a place where you want to get shots like this, then this dome port will help you do that. All right, those are all of the accessories that I currently recommend for shooting vlogs, cinematic footage, and action and sports with your GoPro.
I use almost all of these accessories in real life. The only ones I haven't used are the GoPro dome and the waterproof housing, but everything else I've used to film vlogs and cinematic travel videos, so I can attest that they all work extremely well and they're definitely worth investing in. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below or also check out that link to kit.co if you want to find out more information about any of the products that I just talked about. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe if you want to hear more about GoPros and mirrorless cameras and a lot of the other tools that we use to vlog and run our production company. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Also, let me know if I missed any accessories and I'll include them in next year's video.